Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Sunday, Sunday, the 14th of February, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here today. Now, you know what? I'm going to start the charts uh, right here and take a look. First thing I want to read is this statement by Thomas Jefferson, because it's so apt for our times. And I mean, you got to realize this. He, he wrote this. He made this statement a long, long time ago, before the before the central bank was started. And in, in, in around 1913, they were all meeting out in a place called Jekyll Island. I mean, just this, the sound of the name of it. The bankers were meeting there in this top secret meeting where they're discussing their plans of what they were going to do. And they came up with this Ponzi scheme they got now. And they knew. They knew it was a Ponzi scheme. They were smart enough to gear this system together. They knew it was a Ponzi scheme. But they knew that it would keep going as long as the world was able to expand. As long as industry was able to expand. As long as they were able, people were able to go to new places like maybe Africa and explore and find new mineral deposits and whatever and grow new businesses. As long as the monetary supply was able to keep expanding, this can keep going, this Ponzi scheme. It would enrich them, the bankers. So they started it. Knowing full well that ultimately in the end that it was, go it was a Ponzi scheme and it would just, it would blow up. They knew. They knew it would. But they didn't worry because they didn't figure it would come in their lifetime. And this is going to enrich us. So they got this in place, you know. But look at what Thomas Jefferson said. He said, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issuance of their currency, which they did, and they said not only did they control the issuance of the currency, but these private institutions also have uh, have enriched themselves, and and they've they've grown beyond his wildest dreams. Even I don't even think Thomas Jefferson could have dreamed that we would end up in a situation like we're in right now. It says he says first by inflation. Then by deflation, the banks and corporations that grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent that their fathers conquered. This issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people who, whom it properly belongs. So, so what's, what's actually happening here across America? This is what's coming. This is what's coming. People have to live it. And now, here's the thing. They might not even be able to stay in their cars. And you know, a car is so much better, seriously, than, than having no home at all. I mean, uh, I mean, having no home at all is horrible. But, you know, if, you, if you're in your car, you know, you're sleeping in the back of a van or whatever, you're, you're out of the rain, you're out of the wind. Here's a lady in here. And you can see uh, in the back she's got her... Uh, her, her suits hanging there and her clothes hanging there in the back. And she's sleeping across the front seat with her legs down and around the gas pedals. That can't be real comfortable, you know. Uh, if you're if you got a, a vehicle that, that you're able to uh, stretch out in, you know, it's it's better. But, but still, it's a heck of a lot better than being on the street, you know. But they want you on the street, ultimately, and they'll get you there. If you've got a, if your car's leased... They got you. You know, if you if you're if you're making payments on your car, they got you. And how many people in America are making payments on their car and their cars are leased? Do they own the title to their car directly with no liens against it? That's the first part. Well, even if you do own your car directly, you get no liens against it, and you decide to live in your car, what can happen then is is, is they got insurance regulations, they've got uh, driver's license regulations, they've got uh, uh, it just goes, the list goes on and on. You, if you don't have vehicle insurance, tags, registration, uh, it, it just goes on and on. They keep coming at you from different directions. And even if you've escaped and you're now living in your car because your house is gone, they can even take that from you, you know? And so we're living in a world where ultimately it's almost like they're pushing everybody toward the street. Sit back and think about yourself. 
Think about your situation. Uh, are you renting a house? Or if you're in your house, what kind of a mortgage do you have? Uh, you know, fixed rate is good, you know, but, but the thing is, is if you don't own your house, you still have to make those mortgage payments. Do you own your house outright? Do you own your car outright? Do you have lease and title to your car? Are all your bills paid up? Because they can even take your house if you own it yourself if you can't pay the property taxes. So how much are your property taxes every year? Are you in a place, are you in a house? Do you own a house that has huge property taxes? You know, start thinking about these things now because what they're doing is they're squeezing. And as they squeeze, more and more people are going to fall through the cracks on all of this, you know. Uh, so, so these are things you got to think about because we're going into a hyperinflation. And if you guys don't know what that means, the central bank's trapped right now. There's deflation on one side if they stop printing. And we'll go there mighty fast. We've got hyperinflation on the other side if they print too much. And so right now what they've been doing is they've been trying to find the middle ground, leaning toward the inflation side, where they can kind of glide across that middle ground, and that middle ground is called stagflation. It's where the economy's going nowhere and prices are increasing. That's the middle ground we're in right now. And, you know, this is going to take one of two directions. Either they're going to have to default on the debt, or the opposite side of that is they're going to hyperinflate the value of your dollar away. It's going to go in one of these two directions. Right now, that middle ground that they're taking has been got, they've got a long way in that middle ground ever since 2008 till now, letting us slowly sink into stagflation and stagflate. Can't continue that way. It's going to move in one of these other two directions in the 2022, you know. And I'm thinking the hyperinflationary direction because I don't think they're going to stop printing because it would all deflate. Because as you blow the bubbles up, and the reason why it has to happen this way, I'll explain it to you. As you blow the bubbles up bigger and bigger, like if you had a balloon, you're blowing it up. The skin on the outside of the, the balloon gets more and more tension as the balloon gets fatter and fatter. You've all seen the illustration of how of somebody blowing up a balloon, it's, it's uncontrolled, it's getting bigger and bigger. You know what's going to happen next. Boom! It's going to pop. That's the way with all these bubbles out there. They want to pop. And the more money they pour in, like to the stock market and everything, the more that tension gets on it to, 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 for a sudden cascading fall into deflation. Uh, and it can happen so fast is because there's so much tension on the skin of like the stock market right now is a balloon It's got so much tension on it. It's ready to burst It wants to burst by 90% You know now I see the potential right now for a, about a, 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 a Correction in the stock market of probably 25% 20 to 25% Happening rather suddenly and we don't know the timing of when that'll start but that's only going to create more money printing because when it falls about 20, 25%, you watch them print to bring it back up again. We've been through this before. This same song and dance routine back just about a year ago, you know, back uh, when the crisis was beginning. Back in, in March of, of last year, remember the stock market fell down to 18,000? And, and what did they do? They printed like mad. And the result of all that printing was driving the stock market up to where it is now. Well, you know, we could be in for the same thing all over again, where the stock market falls off and then we get a massive printing goes on, you know. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take a look at something else right here real quick. The Chinese. See this little vehicle? Kind of a boxy looking little thing, but it'll go 100 kilometers an hour. And it'll go, I guess, uh, uh, on a charge. You know, you, the nice thing about it is you can just plug it into your house outlet. Don't have to have a special charging unit or anything like that. And uh, charge this up simple and easy, and it can carry four people. $4,500 is all they're selling it for, and it shouldn't really cost that much more than that. To why, why can't we have cars like that here in America? You know, for commuter cars and stuff, you know. 
says Beijing on the showroom floor, a SA, SIA CGM Wuling automobile dealership in, in Chaingong. A salesman enthusiastically recommends the Yu Gong Guang Mini <laughs> EV, electric vehicle. Electric car that has quickly won over Chinese drivers since its national launch in July. Uh, it's just three meters long. That's about what? 10 or 11 feet? 1.5 meters wide. Accommodates four people. Price starts at $4,460. Uh, the most popular model that has air conditioning goes for just five thousand uh, dollars, and evidently uh, it'll go a hundred kilometers an hour. Top speed, uh, so it'll go 60, 63 miles an hour, which is pretty fast. You could just about get on the freeway with that at that speed, you know. Uh, it says it does not use a cutting edge battery. Evidently, it uses. Uh, uh, conventional probably lead acid batteries, you know. Uh, it's using the older technology, evidently, for batteries. But you know, if it'll go 100 kilometers an hour, why do you need the the the, the Tesla batteries? I mean, most people just they just want a car to run down to the store and back. You know, that'd be perfect for that. I I could see a real market for that car in the United States. And especially with a cheap ta a cheap initial price tag, you know, a price tag of just $5,000. You know, a lot of people could afford that car. But the problem is buying a car like that is you might end up sleeping in it here. Because of this Ponzi scheme that the that the Fed started years ago, you know. They're crushing us all. So, so examine your own personal self. Is your car leased? It, does your car have liens against it uh, that you have to pay and stuff? What if you lose your job? Are you renting a house and leasing a car? You could lose both of them. And then you're standing there, you know, you're like this. Uh, you're standing there, and you're, you're, you got your pockets empty, and you're on the street corner. Suddenly, your life has changed because you, you got nothing to your name. All that work you've done for years and years and years is went to pay rent and went to pay lease on your car and everything else. And now your job's gone. So what do you got that you can hang on to through a situation like that? Do you have uh, some ounces of physical silver and gold that you could uh, grab a hold of? Something you could actually hold in your hands so your pockets aren't completely empty? Do you have an older car, maybe, that is, uh, that's maybe not the prettiest car in the world, but it works? And it's owned by you. I mean, okay, you were running this lease car, and it was like uh, only a year old or six months old. Uh, beautiful. You get inside there, it had a, a heated seats and everything else, you know. That's gone. They just came and took it. You're kicked out of your apartment because you lost your job. What do you got? You got a few gold coins. Or if you've got a car that's... Maybe it's a little bit older. Maybe it's uh, not the latest model. Uh, maybe it's uh, 15 years old, a car, you know. And, but you own it. You got the title to it. And there's no liens against it. And it's all licensed and insured and everything else. Or you can license and insure it. Then you got you got a, you got a house for yourself still. <laughs> you might be living in your car. Because I'm going to tell you, the way these central banks are pushing the button on all of us, they're going to have us all destitute, just like Thomas Jefferson said. He said that, he said, uh, right here, he said, he said, uh, the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. It's coming true for millions of Americans, you know? And for you guys out there who right now are, are still hanging on, they're coming for you. They're coming for you. Uh, we also have another thing happening right now in America and in, in the world. Tech. Technology is a big deflationary. Uh, what it's doing is it's... it's, it's uh, do you remember when, you know, when when you used to go uh, 
uh, an awful lot of things are, 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 are now are free. It used to cost a lot of money, especially on the internet and stuff. And, you know, labor, labor is going to become so much cheaper for them as the technology allows them to create computers. And, and the computers are able to operate these robots and the robots are able to take your job. It's just pennies an hour. And so an awful lot of jobs are going to be lost to technology. And you know, this technology, even though our society is in decay, our technology is still increasing. We got that too, you know, and that's going to take work away from a tremendous amount of people. An awful lot of jobs have been lost in this situation that we've had, you know. And what do you really have? That they can't take away from you. You got to think about that for a minute. Because they can strip you right down until you're penniless. If they got a if they got a lien on everything that you got. And if you lose your income. Got to think about that in these times and as we move into 2022, your cost of living is going to go up to where your job ain't going to cover it. I mean, we could very well see you go into the grocery store right now. You can go to, like, Walmarts right now, and you can find a can of, can of beans for, like, 99 cents. Still, you know, a nice, nice size can of beans. What if you had to pay 49 bucks for that can of beans? And all your food that you use each week. Your food costs then would start to take a significant chunk out of your paycheck. And you might be left with decisions like, uh, what do I do? Do I continue to feed myself this week or uh, do I pay the electrical bill? And oh, by the way, guys, electricity prices are absolutely soaring. So even if you do have an income, they're pushing us. They're pushing us in the direction of penniless. We can't remove this boil, this cyst of the central banks from the system without the system entirely collapsing because what they've done is they've integrated their money the corrupt money the Ponzi scheme money is the only money out there that we use that's our money and if you remove that or try to remove it what happens is you bring the whole system down what they've basically done is 1913 when they when they put that through the, the central bank in the central bank system became established guys they they basically put us on a course uh where that ponzi scheme would eventually erupt in the end and end in a massive massive uh, because it integrated itself into the system and you can't remove it without destroying the system and it'll ultimately destroy the system itself in the end it's almost like somebody who's taken something that that ultimately in the end will kill them, you know, but they, they're addicted to it. And if they stop taking it, they're in a bad situation. No easy way out, but we're looking at 2022 as a year where you're really going to start to see the compounding effects of, of, of this because it's all on an exponential curve. It's the last little bit of an exponential where everything starts to really bite and starts to really take hold where you can actually see the effect you know and so we've lost like 98 percent of the purchasing power of the dollar over the years until now get like that two percent left that two percent starts to go ultimately extremely fast toward the very end uh anyway listen guys i hope you guys are having a great sunday like and subscribe give me a thumbs up We'll catch you guys in the very next episode, uh, probably Monday, and we'll. And you guys have a great rest of the weekend. Bye bye.